Hi, so in October of this year, I made a video on the free Avid Control app, and I demonstrated how you can use it to remotely control Cubase. I also mentioned in that video that Steinberg has their own app for controlling Cubase called Cubase IC Pro, but it didn't work for me anymore under iOS 16. However, about a week ago, I got this email, which is a summary email from the Steinberg forums, and there's an announcement in there saying Cubase IC Pro 1.2.3 and Remote Ski 1.1 is available. So, let's go! So let's read more about this. So it's a forum post from Lars Sloak from Steinberg. Dear all, we are glad to announce the immediate release of Cubase IC Pro 1.2.3 and Remote Ski 1.1. Cubase IC Pro has been updated to support iOS 16 and Mac computers with Apple Silicon, alongside resolving several user reported issues. Now there's an important note that the Steinberg Ski Remote, which has been updated to version 1.1, must be installed before using Cubase IC Pro. Now if you search the Cubase forums for Cubase IC Pro, you will actually find another very similar post with some additional information. And I'll put a link to that in the description. Because in this post they mention that Cubase IC Pro joins Steinberg's holiday season sale, which allows you to save 40% on Cubase IC Pro from December 25th to January 9th. So if you do want to pick up this app, then now might be a good time. And there's also some more information on what has been updated in the app. So they're now supporting iOS 16, Mac computers with Apple Silicon support, manually entering the IP of the computer now works as expected, resolving several problems which can render Cubase IC Pro unreliable, resolving problems where the user interface of Cubase IC Pro is displayed incorrectly. I know I had that for example on my iPhone 14. Channel colors in the mixer are displayed correctly now, and minor improvements in various areas of the application. So let's have a look at what is actually required to install everything for Cubase IC Pro. So looking at the forum post again, the first thing that you need to do is install Steinberg Ski Remote. So the link leads to a download page. And over here you can download Steinberg Ski Remote for your platform. I'm on Windows, so I downloaded this one over here. Now there is a little prerequisite, which is the fact that you need to have installed Bonjour for Windows by Apple. If you follow this link, you get to the Bonjour installation for Windows. So this is a Windows only thing. You can download it and install it, and then you basically have network printing capabilities the Apple way on your Windows computer. After that, you install Steinberg Ski Remote with the installer that you downloaded from here. And if that's all set up, then you can go to Cubase, and you go to Studio, Studio Setup, Add Device, and then you can add Steinberg Ski Remote. I'm not going to do this now because I already added it, it's over here. And apart from that, I didn't need to change anything, I just clicked OK, and it was set up. And next up, you also need to install Cubase IC Pro on your iPhone or iPad, of course. And you can get that one from the App Store. It's Apple only so far. Sorry for the Android users. But this is in the App Store and currently the price is $9.99. I think years ago I paid something like 17 euros or dollars. So it indeed seems to be reduced in price. Now I have a little app here on my desktop which allows me to mirror the screen of my iPhone, which you're looking at now. And on the left top side, you can see that they have the Cubase IC Pro app installed. So if I push that, you can see that Cubase IC Pro starting up in landscape, searching for my door, and it finds it. And I'm in a sort of mixer view. If I click on the arrow on the left top, I can also go to the project view. And there it is, my Cubase project. And if I now move cursor in the app, you can see that it's also moving in the background in my running Cubase program. Now, before I go on and show you more of the app, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the little bell icon if you want to be reminded when I publish another video. If you want to support the channel even more, you can use the super thanks button below the video. Or if you intend to buy anything at these stores, you can use any of the affiliate links below the video to give me a small commission when you buy anything through those links. And it's not just the products that are advertised in those links, but any product in any of those stores. Now back to the app. So let's have a look at the various parts of this app. So like you already saw, there are basically three main pages in this app. The project page, the mix console page, and the key commands page. And every page also has a settings menu. That's a little wrench above the page. So for example, if I click on the settings menu for the project page, you can see that you can enable snap to grid, you can enable auto quantize, pre-count, punch in, punch out. These are all things that you may know from the regular Cubase settings as well. If I click on the X top right, you can actually go to the project view 
And what you basically see over here, going from top to bottom, left top, you see an indication of where we're at in the project. If I push that, you can also change it to time code view instead of bars and beats. Push it again, it goes back to bars and beats. Top right is a project tempo. If you push that, you get the option to set a new tempo for the project or to tap the tempo. Push cancel. Below that, you have a ruler bar showing basically time code, even though on top I have set the bars and beats view and my project is also set to bars and beats by default. So I'm not sure why we're seeing time code here in the ruler view. Maybe it's still a bug, I don't know. Below that you're seeing all your project tracks and if you compare it to my regular Cubase view you can see that well there are many tracks and in my regular Cubase view I can scroll up and down but the app basically compresses all the tracks to one view. I cannot actually go up and down in the app. I can only go left and right by touching it and swiping left and right on the app and I can also zoom in and zoom out on the app by pinching the view and expanding it again. Now on the ruler on top of the project, you can see that I have some markers. In this case, I have cycle markers. And below the project view in the app, you can see those cycle markers with brackets around them. So if I push the one cycle marker, it's going to move to the start of cycle one, push the two, start of cycle two. If I want to move to the right side of cycle two, I can push the R button here and L again to go to the left side of cycle two. At the end, there's a plus button that allows you to add additional markers, regular ones, or cycle markers. Below the markers, there is a transport bar. I can go left and right to my markers. I can scroll left and right. I can enable or disable cycle mode. I can start play. I can obviously start recording and I can enable or disable the metronome as well. So it's quite a nice and concise project view that allows you to always see where you're at in your project. A feature which I was actually missing from the Avid app. Let's move on to the Mix Console page now. If I click on the arrow on the top left again, I go back to the Overview page and if I now click Mix Console, you see that you get a very, well, quite large Mix Console. But at least on my relatively small iPhone, this is very usable. So I can, for example, mute tracks, solo tracks, listen to tracks via the listen bus, Enable read and write for automation. And I can vary the volume. Hang on, let's switch to mix of viewing Cubase as well. So you can actually see the little slider move when I move it in the app. You can also see that when you move the slider, you see an indication in decibels on top. And if you release it, it will go back to the name of the track. There's also a way to get it back to default state, which you do by console clicking in the regular application. And in this case, yeah, I cannot easily show it, but you basically click on the button you swipe left off of the button and then it sort of gets magnetic and it sticks to the default position if you release it. Now there's other options for this mix console because if you go to the settings, you can see that right now the switch controls are set to read write, but I can also set the switch controls to record or monitor. And if you then go back, you see that I now have monitor and record buttons here, which previously were read and write buttons for the automation. Now there's also the option to show or not show various channel types in the monitor view. You have different zoom levels. If you go to the highest zoom level, you see that you basically only see the level indicators for every channel. If you go to the medium zoom position, you see that you see level indicators and the volume sliders, but it's only in the large zoom level that you get all the additional controls. Now another interesting feature is that if you go to the settings of the mix console again, you see that currently the switch view has been set to mix console, but I can also set it to QMix. And let's say that I want to make a specific mix for QMix 1. So then currently I can actually set up what I want to send to QMix 1. So if I, for example, enable channel 3, you can see that the QMix on channel 3 is turned on in Cubase now. And by varying this slider, I can vary the amount that is sent of this channel to the QMix. And I can do that for several channels so that I can make a full QMix that maybe I'm going to send to the headphones of the musician that's recording so that he only hears the parts that are relevant for him to record to. Now, next up are the key commands, of which there are quite a lot. There's many pages of key commands and you can actually organize them in the settings. You can delete key commands, move them, etc., and you can save a certain setup for key commands if you want to restore it later. But what you do need to remember about these key commands is that sometimes you need to return to Cubase to actually complete the action. 
Not for simple ones like this. For example, select all. You see that all my tracks have been selected. But if you go to something like Mixer 2, for example, you see that Mixer 2 opens in Cubase, but you cannot actually do anything with that Mixer 2 in the app. You need to return to Cubase to do something with Mixer 2. Or if you push audio connections, you see that the audio connections dialog opens in Cubase. So then you can change your audio connections in the desktop program, but not in the app. But it might be quite nice if you set this up on an iPad and have it in front of you in the studio to have quick shortcuts to go to certain features in the program that you use very often. Now, obviously, this app is much more set up for controlling Cubase than the free Avid Control app, which is more of a generic app. So for this one, you have very direct access to a lot of the Cubase features that are available. And I think it's quite handy. That's why I bought it already many, many years ago. It was just unfortunate that it no longer seemed to work on iOS 16. But I'm quite happy that it's working again now. I did notice two possible bugs. One is the ruler track in the project view, which only seems to display timecode and not bars or beats. I do not actually know whether it's a bug or intentional, but I think it would be nice to see bars and beats there as well. Another thing that I noticed while using this app in a short period is that it froze twice on me. So Cubase was still working, but the app just showed a frozen screen. After restarting the app, it was working and connected to Cubase again, but it did freeze on me twice. Like I said, there's no Android version yet. I'm not sure whether they're planning that, but currently it's only for iPhone and iPad. Now, if you haven't seen my video yet on how to control Cubase with the free Avid Control app, I will link it over here. You can check it out, enjoy, and I'll see you soon. 